Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Triboelectric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. Today, we're talking about active water content and why it's important in static sift. If you're curious about this topic, keep watching. For those that have been following, we've covered topics such as manual static sift in episode 17 and the COA results from the plasma static prototype in episode 18. Today in episode 22, we're addressing a subject that has come up frequently in inquiries, the influence of active water content or water activity on trichome separation, in particular in the context of our plasma static freefall separator, but applicable to manual static sift as well. This discussion will provide valuable insight for optimizing your processing operations. To begin, let's define active water content. In technical terms, this refers to water activity denoted as AW, which measures the water availability in a material for physical, chemical, or biological processes. It ranges from zero for completely dry conditions to one for pure water. In cannabis processing, water activity is essential for factors like microbial stability, and material integrity. Typically maintained below 0.65 to prevent mold growth while preserving trichome quality. Our research has shown that AW is also a critical parameter for triboelectric charging for electrostatic separation. As reviewed in earlier episodes, the separation process relies on tribocharging, where friction generates electrical charge on particles. In the plasma static system, Trichomes acquire a negative charge due to the resinous composition, while biomass components like leaves and stems tend toward positive or neutral charges. These particles then free fall through an electrical field between electrode plates, allowing for differential deflection and collection without the need for heat, solvents, or excessive mechanical handling. What our latest investigations reveal, detailed in a paper published in the Journal of Cannabis Research, co-authored with Alex Martineco, is that water activity directly impacts the efficiency of this charging and separation. The full paper is available through open access, so I encourage you to review it through the link provided. In controlled testing environments, with temperatures at or below 60 degrees Fahrenheit and in relative humidity no higher than 40% to limit the moisture effects, we conditioned cannabis samples to AW levels from 0.1 to 0.8 using equilibrated salt chambers. The results indicate an optimal range centered at approximately 0.4 AW. At this level, trichomes demonstrate strong negative charging, typically in the range of negative 0.5 to negative 1 nanocoulombs per gram, with biomass showing complementary positive charges at around positive 0.4 nanocoulombs per gram. This charge differential enables effective deflection in the separator resulting in trichome purity of 85 to 95% and yields exceeding 85%. The moderate water activity facilitates a thin moisture layer on particle surfaces, which enhances frictional interactions during tribocharging while maintaining sufficient insulation to retain the charge. This is particularly relevant when incorporating frozen material, as discussed in episode 9 regarding ice crystal structures where Certain forms at low temperatures act as effective dielectrics. However, deviations from this optimal AW lead to reduced performance. Above 0.6 AW, increased moisture creates a more conductive surface layer, often incorporating mobile ions, which dissipates charge rapidly. Consequently, particles may initially charge, but lose the electrical potential before entering the electrical field leading to separation efficiency dropping below 50%. This effect is compounded by ambient humidity, as noted in episode 8, where moisture deposition can further elevate AW during processing. Conversely, at AW levels below 0.2, the material becomes overly dry, limiting the polar surface interactions necessary for robust tribal charging. Charge magnitudes fall below 0.1% nanocoulombs per gram in absolute terms, resulting in minimal deflection. Particles simply pass through the field and collect in the neutral bin, where the yields reduce significantly. While the inherent chemistry of trichomes, their terpenes, waxes, and cannabinoids, supports charge generation via the triboelectric series, minimal moisture presence is required to amplify and sustain it. For practical implementation, 
I recommend monitoring water activity with a reliable instrument such as this aqua gauge targeting 0.4 AW through preconditioning steps like controlled drying or humidification and setups involving fresh frozen biomass, assess AW after thawing as it can vary. Integrating desiccant systems or operating in a cold room can help maintain stability throughout the process. These adjustments have proven to enhance efficiency and output in our validations. To modify the AW of your hash, two main methods are used. Freeze drying for two to four hours, or air drying when you have a lot of hash. Typically, a room of grow tent is used where there's plenty of air circulation and dehumidification. Hash is placed on silk screen trays in thin layers so hash can dry effectively. If you do freeze dry, keep in mind you can overdo it. If your hash is too dry, AW can be modified by letting it sit in a humid room for a short time. If particles possess innate charges from their chemical composition, why does AW play such a role? We hypothesize that trichome chemistry indeed drives a foundational charge, but water activity serves as a modulator, enhancing electron transfer at optimal levels without causing dissipation or insufficiency. Our Faraday cage measurements confirm the base charges, yet AW optimization makes them viable for practical separation. In conclusion, controlling water activity at around 0.4 is essential for maximizing the performance of electrostatic separation in the plasmastatic system leading to superior yields, purity, and operational efficiency. This approach aligns with solventless processing goals, preserving the integrity of active compounds. In conclusion, dry your hash. If it's too dry, it's a problem. If it's not dry enough, it's a problem. You can use one of these little devices here to truly know how dry your hash is. If you can't afford one or you don't have one, the telltale sign that your hash is dry is how it flows. It should look like very dry beach sand. If it's sticky or doesn't flow very well, it just means that it's too wet and likely not the best consistency for electrostatic processing. What's your experience with active water content? What do you believe is the optimum number? Please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Oh, before I let you go, we have a show during MJ BizCon in Las Vegas in December where we are going to teach all things SIFT. So if you guys are in the U.S. or can come to the U.S., you definitely don't want to miss it. And uh, it's been a long time since I made another video. I'm not really sure why I decided today. I woke up today and I said, you know what? Fuck it. We got to continue the series. We have a lot to give to the community. And this is just my way of showing this enormous static SIF movement that we care and we want it to continue. Everybody continue making those fucking amazing static products and keep pushing the industry forward. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here. Much appreciated. Bad kitty. You bad ass pussy. Uh, fuck. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Targeting 0 0.4. Fuck.